Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Airports can be extremely busy, with planes taking off and landing 24-7, which means there is a possibility of an incident on or around the runway. This is why an airport must always be prepared for an eventuality and be equipped with all the necessary instruments to deal with an emergency. This includes airport crash tenders, which are specialized firefighting trucks designed for aircraft firefighting at aerodromes, airports, and military air bases. Their design is conceived to meet the standards given by the International Civil Aviation Organization created from analysis of aircraft movements at airports. This is why only a few companies manage to create vehicles with all the features necessary to meet these conditions. One of these is Rosenbauer Group whose lineup of aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicles have one of the most advanced systems globally. Their Panther truck is one of the most successful, efficient, and variable ARF vehicles worldwide. This vehicle exists in 4x4, 6x6, and 8x8 versions with the latter capable of carrying 3,830 gallons of fire extinguishing agents. All of them have innovative features, such as the bird view camera system that provides a single 360 degree overhead view on the cab LCS screen, helping the driver to understand all the activity that's taking place around the vehicle. Its manufacturing process is carried out in two key plants. Leon Ding 2 in Austria and Minnesota in the USA, with the former being the main one. The latest Panther model began to be assembled in 2014 under the industrial standards of the automotive and engineering industry. This plant was set up for an annual production capacity of around 150 vehicles of the Panther type and 250 AT municipal vehicles. This production begins with creating the base frame using high strength steel sections to ensure the structure is torsionally rigid. To build its body, the company assembles four main prefabricated modules, which consist of the driver's cabin, the pump room module, the tank module, and the rear module. This truck's cabin was designed using a newly developed FEM optimized simulation and advanced crash tests. Similar capabilities can be seen in vehicles from other companies. While each has unique technologies that differentiate them from the rest, all must have key implements such as a complete pump system, basic piping, and shutter closures. This, combined with the bumper-mounted turrets, allows the airport crash tenders to be prepared to deal with any fire emergency that might occur in the airport. With their capacity to discharge water or foam at distances beyond 300 feet, those vehicles can smother a burning aircraft and its aviation fuel quickly, giving survivors a chance to escape. All of this has allowed these systems to become popular in airports worldwide creating training programs and specialized teams to become familiar with all the tools and systems these vehicles possess. Eventually, everything has resulted in an improvement in emergency groups and has driven the development of new systems and vehicles.
for training purposes. That allows all agencies in the area to, to get together and to perform the duties that they're going to be asked to do. Um, you know, we get out with this truck, we flow water actually to a, you know, to a simulated plane. Um, so, so things like that help us to prepare for an incident on the airfield. The potential of these vehicles has extended to numerous areas, including the United States Air Force, which has commissioned the development and construction of specialized ARFs to be air transportable. This responsibility was taken on by E-1, tasked with building this vehicle called the Titan ATP-19C, as well as 48 more as part of the order requested by the Air Force. Its main feature is its ability to be transported by a C-130 Super Hercules during rapid deployments on missions, making it a more compact design than other vehicles with the same purpose. Despite its smaller size, these vehicles can carry up to 1,000 gallons of water and 140 gallons of foam concentrate to reduce and extinguish any type of fire. Creating these vehicles demonstrates that fire emergencies can occur in any situation, including on ships and in maritime environments. For these situations, Firefighting watercraft, known as fireboats, have been used since the 18th century and have been developed since then. Modern fireboats are filled with innovative tools to handle the fires, including multiple pumping systems around the deck, with some capable of releasing up to 38,000 gallons per minute and up to 400 feet in the air. Boats like the Brent Director Westfall feature a full range of ambulance equipment, self-protection, and safe air systems. In addition, the vessel has been outfitted with a dynamic positioning system provided by Navis Engineering and a side-scan sonar to locate and classify objects in the water. Thanks to those features, Fireboats are frequently used on docks and shoreside warehouses, as they can directly attack fires on the supports beneath these structures. In addition, most of these boats have pumps capable of extracting water from around them, so they have an endless supply of this resource, which can be limited in conventional fire trucks. Therefore, they are a valuable asset for keeping around ports and providing assistance to the firefight teams during an emergency. Although these boats are primarily designed to fight fires, many have tools on hand to use the boat for patrol duties. They monitor navigable waters for signs of distress or unsafe activities, which helps prevent accidents. We respond to emergency on the water to include medical, fire, disabled boaters, uh, lost individuals. We also help restore navigational aids. We do have navigable water here that is used for commercial shipping. Uh, so one of our responsibilities is to go out when the Coast Guard asks and make sure, hey, are all those buoys still there so that people can navigate the James? Emergencies of this type have triggered the creation of innovative systems that fight fires efficiently and reduce the risk for victims and firefighters. This has resulted in the application of robotic systems, which have been increasingly researched and developed to solve these emergencies. The goal of this development is to allow these robots to perform hazardous tasks, keeping human firefighters at safer distances. Such research has led to two categories of robotic systems, one being fixed systems, which are the most widespread, 
consisting of fire monitors and fire suppressors inside warehouses, landing areas, or tunnels. The other type consists of mobile robots, which are more versatile and can be deployed in several environments, either outdoors or inside buildings. Many mobile systems are equipped with advanced sensors, including visual and infrared cameras, gas concentration detectors, and rangefinders to aid navigation. They can be ground-based or aerial, with the ground robots being often tracked or wheeled vehicles. A human controller is in charge of operating those robots remotely, using the feedback data from multiple sensors inside the machine. These vehicles range from 990 to 20,500 pounds, moving at speeds of 1.5 to 12 miles per hour, and primarily powered by batteries or diesel engines. One significant example is the LUF-300 SG firefighting robot. Motorized with a 300 horsepower diesel engine and a booster pump delivering 1,450 gallons of water per minute with 8 bar output pressure. Further advances have also brought with them an increase in the use of electric mobility in firefighting robots, thanks to the fact that these systems offer quieter and more efficient operations. In addition to the fact that more compact systems can be created compared to those that use combustion engines. These are the advantages that robots like the LUF Nano have, being designed to be small and maneuverable and adapted to indoor and confined space firefighting. Like other devices from this company, the LUF Nano is equipped with an onboard water cannon capable of high pressure water or foam discharge to suppress fire quickly. In addition to serving as firefighting tools, robots can support firefighting teams by using other types of tools, such as the LUF hose collection system. This allows for handling long hoses during a firefighting operation, which can be tedious when done manually. This robot automates the process by collecting the hoses, significantly reducing the physical strain on firefighters and speeding up operations. Thus, firefighters can focus on firefighting while the robot handles the logistics of hose management. The emergence of these new technologies to combat fires and other similar emergencies has resulted in positive progress for combat forces and the commercial area. The fact of obtaining better results by saving more lives and preventing more catastrophic events drives even more to develop these devices. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.